All right, so we are on chapter three and level one. First off, I just want to do a brief overview of the whole chapter. So chapter three is talking about charts and visual visually representing uh, quantitative data. And a lot of times when you have a large amount of data, it's a lot easier to interpret when you put it into a visual. So um, we're going to be looking at doing that, creating charts, um, some of the basic principles to follow when you create charts. Later we're going to illustrate some advanced charting techniques uh, as well as how to combine different chart types within the same chart. And in this chapter we are Michelle who monitors company performance and she gathers necessary data for managing the company. Um, she, right now she's getting ready to prepare a, a report and presentation on the company's performance compared to other industry competitors and so she's gathering information from each of the three divisions in the company as well as on the stock in the stock market, the company's stock. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing this chapter. Level 1 starts on page 156 of your text. Alright, and on the top of that page you'll see a graph. It's a weather chart and it does a really good job of presenting a large amount of data very effectively. Um, it's, it really does a good job of that. A good chart is going to successfully organize a large collection of data and make comparisons with the data as well as telling a story. All right. And here I have a chart. This is consumer purchases for the zone. And this is, you look at it, it's difficult to kind of tell what it's saying. It's cluttered. There's a lot of redundant information, um, etc., etc. A lot of chart elements. This is kind of an example of what not to do with a chart. Okay. Um, graphing excellence depends on the clarity of the information that's being presented. You want to have precision so that it's easy to see what's going on, efficiency um, so that you don't have, aren't overwhelmed with the data, um, and you want to try to use the least ink in the smallest space. Those are just kind of some guiding principles. There was a guy, his name was Edward Tuft, and he's considered to be a pioneer in data visualization. He came up with five different principles when you're graphing data. He said, above all else, show the data, maximize your data ink ratio, erase non-data ink, erase redundant data ink, and revise and edit. Okay, so those are his five principles. And basically what those boil down to is that everything on a chart needs to have a reason for being there. So a the, um, you need to have ink obviously devoted to displaying the data and that needs to be the main use of anything on your chart is displaying the data. Um, you need to avoid in general anything that decorates rather than informs. Um, there's a place for that but in general and you don't want to repeat information. You want to not be redundant. You can always continue to improve your charts so continue to look at them, revise and edit. Obviously you want to make sure that you're getting your intended message across. So continue to always consider what your intended message is um, because the, a positive feature in one chart may be a negative in another because it doesn't support what you're trying to get across or what you're trying to illustrate All right, with your chart. And the purpose of formatting in charts is to make them easier to understand. So too little formatting could leave the data ambiguous so that someone doesn't really get what you're trying to say, but too much will take away so that that's what they're just noticing the formatting rather than noticing the data. All right, so over here, scrolling over, is the same data that I used in this chart has been used to make this chart as well, and this is just a better chart for the data. It's clean, it's crisp, um, it's easy to see what's going on with the data and what's being presented. You can easily see the trends um, over time. It's got these data markers, which do a really good job of being able, you, it's easy to see what year you're looking at and just single grid lines that make it easy to determine where the numbers are falling. All right, so this is an example of a good chart that's been done out of the same data. All right. So now that we've illustrated that, I am on page 159 of your text. So 
Um, we want to do a little bit with spark lines. Um, they're a way that we can turn raw data into information and into a decently meaningful visual display, um, which is important. And one of the things when we're looking to turn data into a graphic is we want to make sure that we're effectively conveying the significance that's hidden in these data sets. All right. Um, sometimes doing this can help us uncover relationships or trends that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. All right, and this enables us to make better and more productive decisions about our data. This brings us back to Michelle, and so she's got this data here. She needs to organize and analyze it. And she's going to add spark lines to each row in each column of this data to kind of show a quick comparison over the last eight years of what is going on in these different areas. All right. So spark lines are really easy. You just highlight your data, hit this insert tab. There's a spark lines group over here. And choose your spark lines and you just can choose where you want to put them. You can even put them underneath your numbers if you want to. Um, I like to put them in their own cells personally. So this gives us a kind of a brief visual of what the data is doing each year. Um, we've got our equipment, our footwear, and our apparel here you can see. And as we go, our footwear is gaining ground here. Here it passes equipment. Equipment falls off. And here our apparel starts coming up. All right. So that kind of gives us a little bit of an idea of what's going on in the company. Now I'm going to insert some for each category here. All right. So we can kind of see the same trend here that equipment is doing well, but it's falling off in recent years. Um, footwear is gaining, gaining ground, and so is apparel. So this gives us a little bit of an idea of what's going on, but the lack of a common axis here um, on these ones, I mean, it's hard to see how much it's come up because apparel looks like it's coming up really high, but if we look at these ones, not really. So our common axis, the lack of a common axis here could make these a little bit confusing. Um, so they're really not giving us enough detail for what we are looking for here. So now what we want to do is create a chart that kind of helps us examine this data further. All right, so I'm going to select it out. Notice when I did the spark lines, I only selected the data. When you insert a chart, you want to make sure you get your labels as well. So I've got these labels up here, my years, as well as these labels down here. All right. And if you go to the Insert tab and the Charts, you have this Recommended Charts button, which is really awesome. These are the charts that Excel thinks would best visualize the data that you have selected. Okay, so, um, and it gives you a live preview of each one. Excuse me, so let's go ahead and start with the line chart. All right, so this chart does pretty good, oh, excuse me, I have the hiccups, oh, um, showing us the data. And it's showing us the trend in each category. So I've got my equipment here, and I can see the trend that it's doing well, and it's sort of dropping off in the last few years. Let's go ahead and create a column chart from the same data so we can compare it side by side. OK. So we've got our column chart here. And this chart is the same data, but you'll notice that it emphasizes something a little bit different. Um, in this chart, we're emphasizing the comparison between the three categories each year. All right, so this chart emphasizes the trend over the year years for each category. And this one, each year, we have this comparison between the three categories, okay? So depending on what you're trying to emphasize will change what chart you use, all right? so. Michelle decides that she wants to um, keep, let's see, which one does she keep? She keeps the line, or she keeps the column chart is the one she decides on, it looks like. So we're going to work with the column chart a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this one. Actually, I'm going to use this one to illustrate some stuff before I actually get rid of it. So. Um, but first, before I do that, I want to just hit briefly um, choosing the right chart type to represent your data can be a little challenging. There are 10 chart types in Excel and 53 subtypes, so there's a lot to choose from, and it can be a little overwhelming sometimes. Um, 
charts can display a combination of both numeric and category data. So like in this chart, this is considered numeric and these years are considered category, even though they're numbers, it's a year, not an actual number of anything. So this is considered uh, cate category data. Um, and when you create a chart, you're gonna need at least one numeric set of data and one categoric set of data. Um, there are a couple chart types that require two kinds of numeric data rather than category data. Um, the main one is a scatter chart, and I'm going to show that to you here in just a sec. There's a table on page 163 and 164 of your text that goes over the different chart types in Excel and when you would choose one versus another. Um, you can also place a chart on a separate chart sheet. So um, in some of your projects, it's going to ask you to do that. And so I want to show you what that is. If you are, have your chart selected, you can hit this move chart button. Um, and when your object is in, that's called embedding it in a data sheet, all right? Is what that means. It's embedding it in a worksheet. If you want to put it on a chart sheet, if that is what is specified, you need to click this new button, new sheet button, and hit the OK button. All right, and that'll move your chart to its very own sheet with nothing else in it. You'll notice there are no cells here for me to enter data in. Okay, that's because this is considered a chart sheet, not a worksheet. Okay, and this um, is important because it comes into play mostly when you are trying to print your workbooks, um, but it is important, so uh, um, just make sure when you see that, this is what you're doing. All right, this is a chart sheet. Um, I want to show you a scatter chart. I don't. We don't really go over these in this chapter. Um, a scatter chart chart requires two uh, two types of numeric data. So on this chart, you'll see that these numbers here are not being treated as years; they're being treated as numbers. Okay. Um, and because of that, Excel adds a buffer here. It adds the next number in the series, 2008, and then over here, 2017. So there's this buffer here so it's easier to see where your data is falling. Um, and so this is a scatter chart and how that works. All right, so it's, it's a numeric data series here and a numeric data series here. And I just wanted to show you that. Um, okay. So I don't think I really need to go into that whole. If you want to know more about scatter charts, Excel talks or the book talks about them on page 165 and 166 of the text. It gives you a little more information. I just wanted to show it to you here. I don't think I really need to go into it a whole lot right now. Um, so I'm just going to go back to this here. All right. So Michelle's looking at this column chart and she decides, you know, this is a little too busy. So I only want to show data from the last five years instead of the last eight. So you can click this filter button here, and this shows you everything that is going on in your chart. And she only wants the last five years, so here's one, two, three, four, five. We are going to deselect these right here. And if you hit the apply button, now we've only got five years in our chart instead of eight. All right, so that makes it a little bit less busy. Okay, so by default, the data in a chart is displayed by rows, and what I mean by that is that you'll see my legend down here. I have equipment, footwear, and apparel. And over here you see that equipment, footwear, and apparel are the rows in my data. All right, I can go up here and on my design chart tools design tab, if you hit this switch row column button, it'll change that. And now you'll notice my legend is my years, which are my columns. So now, each column represents a year of um, time. And so this is my equipment now. I can see the trend in equipment over the years, and I can see the trend in footwear over the last five years, and for apparel, etc. Okay? And so this is just, the reason for that is you can illustrate different trends and highlight different comparisons depending on what you're looking for. Um, Depending, so you can, I mean, you can just change how you display your data, whether you do it by row or column. All right, so that tool is there. Okay, so 
I'm on page 168 and it says that Michelle's more interested in the amount of each year's sales of equipment so she's going to keep this and plot it by column. Alright, and Excel offers a lot of formatting display options for changing the layout of your chart elements. Um, so we want to do a few things to this chart just to make it look a little nicer. I want to give it a chart title here. And I'm going to call this Consumer Purchases. Consumer Purchases. Okay. And let's see. Looks like our numbers here might be interpreted as quantities instead of sales, so I really want to make this um, clear what this is indicating. So I'm going to double click that. And over here we have all sorts of different options for what to do with our charts. And if I scroll down, you'll see number down here. Um, and you can just play around in these. There's so much different stuff you can do with charts. Um, we are not going to hit everything in this chapter. Um, the more you use this stuff, the more you'll know how to get there. But there's so much that sometimes when I'm trying to do something with a chart, I use this stuff all the time and I still have to search for something every now and again. Um, because depending on what you're clicked on or where you're at, there's just so many different options. So um, for numbers here, I want to call it currency. Um, make that look like a number. And then I'm going to get rid of that again. Oh, and the way I made that come up, if you double click on any element of your chart, um, the appropriate uh, help box will appear over here. So I click, double clicked here on a data series. And you'll notice here it came up with format data series. Okay, if I click double click up here, it'll say format chart title and it'll give me all the chart title options. Okay, so anything you want to do with your chart, you just double click on that piece, you'll get that um, help window that opens up over there. All right, and so now I want to add access titles here. So click on that and you'll notice that they appear here and here. And I'm just gonna double click inside this one. Um, when you get the dotted lines is when you can edit inside these titles. I'm going to call this in millions. Is that what they want? Okay, and then just click off and save that. All right. Added my access titles and call this one. All right, so that looks pretty nice. I've got good stuff going on. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about area charts now on page 170. It goes over them. An area chart combines the features of a line chart with the features of a bar or column chart. All right, um, let's just go ahead and do one to illustrate. So insert a... 3D chart. All right, so this is a 3D, or excuse me, this is an area chart. You'll notice it has the line, and this is the same trend as we saw in our line chart, okay? But it's got filled in underneath it. So it kind of sh is showing us the contribution of that um, category each year. So in that way, it's combining the column with the bar, and I can see the different. Um, the differences in my categories here between my apparel and footwear and equipment, etc. Um, the one negative about a area chart that I want you to notice is that a lot of times, depending on how the data series is set up, um, you can end up hiding parts of your data. So this equipment here is trending off and it ends up going behind this data series so you don't can't see what it's doing behind that. Okay, so that's the negative of a, an area chart, All right? Um, pie charts you generally use when you're trying to display percentage contribution versus value contribution. Um, and it's just a quick visual for those relative percentages. All right. Um, so it looks like Michelle is happy with this column chart here. Oopsies. Didn't mean to move that. 
meant to move my chart. If you hover over the edge of your chart and you get this um, four-headed arrow, you can move your chart around. You can also resize it. If you ha hover over the corners or the sides, you'll get a two-headed arrow. And you can resize it and make it however big you want um, it to look. So I'm going to add another sheet here. We're going to call this uh, Consumer Purchases 2016. And then I'm going to copy my data here. And go ahead and just paste it. All right, so now what we want to do is kind of make a percentage comparison um, in the data for 2016, the, the most recent year that we have sales numbers for, and kind of see what's going on in this year. So I'm going to select this data here, and I'm going to hold down the control button and select um, my data labels here, and then insert a pie chart. Okay, so I have a little pie chart here. Um, it's not very interesting, and it shows me the data, but it doesn't do much for me visually. Okay, so I want to make it look a little nicer and be a little more appealing to the viewer. First, I want you to notice um, I've got my three different categories here and my three different labels here. It's important when you are creating a pie chart, make sure you select the same number of rows of data as you do categories. Okay, if they're off, um, Excel will create too many data points and it'll mess stuff up. So just be aware of that. All right, so I'm just going to show you a little bit of how you can play with charts with this pie chart. Um, whenever you're clicked in a chart, you'll have these two um, extra tabs appear up here, design chart, your design tab and your format tab under chart tools. And the design tab is more of has to do with your data and what your data is doing, and the format has to do with your look of your chart. Okay, and then that's in addition to whatever you click on and you get this stuff over here. All right, so when I say there's a lot you can do with charts, there's a lot you can do with charts. All right, so I'm gonna change this to a 3D pie chart, um, make it a little fancier. And so it's got a little bit of rotation down here, but I want to give it a little bit more. So, um, double click my chart here. Let's see, chart options, effects. We've got 3D rotation here. And the Y axis is the horizontal axis. So I can see it's um, rotated quite a bit there. I'm gonna make that 40 degrees. You can see that it's tipping horizontally this direction. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Um, we want to make our chart title. And we're going to call this 2016 Consumer Purchases. Okay, and then click off. What else do we want to do? I want to get rid of this chart legend here. I don't think we need that. Um, that'll help it be bigger. I want category names as data labels. So I go over here and I click data labels. Um, when you're doing your projects and it's giving you instructions, look for the keywords. So I'm on page 172 right now. It's telling me what to do with this chart. And bullet point number four, it says includes category names and percentages as data labels. All right. So that tells me Okay, data labels. If you go and look for category names and percentages, you are not going to find them, honey, unless you, until you find these data labels. Okay, so look for the keywords and find those, um, and that'll help you get to other um, things of the chart. Okay, so now that I have these data labels, I can double click that data label and I get this format data label options box here. But if I didn't have data labels on this, I would never be able to get here. I mean, it would, um, you can't get there. Okay, so be aware of that. If you are having trouble getting somewhere in your projects with your charts, Google it real quick. Um, there's, it's pretty easy Excel. Um, you'll usually end up on a Microsoft help page that'll just walk you right through what you need to do to get to what you need. 
So let's see, what am I doing here? Category names and this is what I want. Um, here we go. Size alignment, label options, that's what we want. So we want category names, that gives us those equipment, footwear, apparel, etc. And we do not want the values and we want percentages. Okay, so that's looking pretty nice. And we want these to be um, a larger bold font. So that's our options, number, shadow, glow, soft edges, fill border. Looking for size, alignment, oh, text options. Here we go. So text fill, text outline. Sorry. Text box, let's try this. Oh, I know why I can't find it, it's on the home tab. See now I'm trying to get make it too confusing. So bold this um, and make it bigger. So there we go. Sometimes I forget when something is so simple where it is. So um, all the main stuff never moves, it's always all up here. So alright, so now we want to explode this pie slice. So I'm going to double click this footwear pie slice and that will make this data point um, box come up. And I can explode this pie slice. Does it give me an idea? Alright, so I can either drag it like that and that will give me a percentage or you can type in a percentage here or you can drag this baby. Okay, so however you want to do it um, you can explode that pie slice a little bit. And it says it wants us to change the colors. So, and you can also do that. You can do it here. Um, I'm going to make this, you know, really fancy. Whatever. You make it whatever colors you want here. Um, there's also colors here, um, pre selected. Um, color groups. So, oh, that's kind of pretty. All right. So anyway, you can get to those either way or you can do them individually um, by double clicking and using this fill bucket here. All right. So that's kind of an overview of what you can do with a pie chart and charts in general and how to get to stuff. Um, we already talked about double clicking the area of a chart opens this task pane over here. And Michelle really likes the way that this exploded chart piece emphasizes the footwear category and that this chart is going to do a great job of showing how each category sporting goods contributes to the total purchases for 2016. Um, a note on 3D charts, they can often be more attractive and interesting, but they can also sometimes be more difficult to interpret, especially like 3D column charts. Um, why don't we just do one of those and show you that real quick. So. Insert uh, charts column. All right, so 3D charts. Um, there we go. That's one really more. 3D charts um, can be pretty fancy and um, get into some really neat stuff, but sometimes they can be more um, difficult to interpret. So it just depends on what data you're trying to present. Just be wary of the sort of things you're doing to your charts. Um, you can change the order of data series by bringing each one in to the chart individually. So like if you don't like the order that this is in, you'd rather have the blue in the back because of the height of it or whatever. I mean, you can change the way it looks, etc. But um, just be aware of some of the drawbacks to some of these chart types as well. So, all right, at this point, you should be able to complete steps to success level one on page 176 and then come back and we'll do level two.